But this morning, um, in Proverbs chapter 19, as I was reading through, uh, man, there's so many good little nuggets in all of these Proverbs. But I want to focus in on one, one idea here today. Proverbs 19, uh, he makes a comment. He said, good sense makes one slow to anger. Good sense makes one slow to anger. Uh, good sense, meaning a balanced view, um, a, a consistent view, good sense. We, we might say common sense, but we would all agree that common sense is probably not so common anymore. Uh, but good sense, he says, makes one slow to anger. Uh, having, having the ability to step back and evaluate the situation having a sense to be able to step back and, and not respond to that situation immediately. And here's the key. And, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Um, anger, oftentimes, is a result, at the root of anger many times, is being offended by someone, being offended by what somebody says, being offended by what somebody does, being offended when my opinion, most often, it's when my opinion that I hold to is, is challenged. And here he says that, um, that in the latter part of it, it's to his glory to overlook an offense. That when I have the opportunity to be offended by what somebody says, a word that somebody uses, uh, my goodness, we, we are living in a culture today where... It, it, Anything we say or do, we're concerned, is it going to offend someone else? Um, but it's to his glory, it's to his, um, it's to his majesty to be elevated when we don't take an offense. Sometimes we just need to resolve to not be offended, <laughs> um, just to refuse to be offended, especially when it's related to something that is, a, is an opinion of mine. And I have some pretty strongly held opinions, and, and we all do. I think the older I get, the more strongly my opinions are on some things. Um, you've often heard me say from the pulpit that this is my opinion. Yeah, it matters a lot to me, but it probably doesn't matter much to you. You can take it, leave it, chunk it, or flush it. And my opinion really doesn't matter. What, what really matters is what the Word of God says, not what my opinion is. Uh, he, he uses the same word in a different way in the previous chapter, chapter 18, where he says, A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city, and quarreling is like the bars of a castle. Uh, that one who takes up an offense, one who is offended by what somebody says or what somebody does, um, they are harder to win over than a fortified city. Have you ever offended somebody unintentionally? and you recognize that you've offended them and, and you go to them and say, man, I, I, I didn't intend to offend you. I'm sorry that I offended you. Um, and you know how difficult it is to win that person over, not to, not to manipulate them, but to win them back over into, into good fellowship with you. It's very difficult. And it's, a, it's, a, it, it's not good for us to be offended either. Uh, in that situation where you or I may be trying to win somebody back over in friendship or, or fellowship because we've offended them, we know how difficult that is. But it's more difficult even for the one who has been offended. Um, I, I, I uh, used this illustration I'm about to show you a few years ago in a, in a sermon here, actually, talking about not taking up an offense. And I had someone that was so offended that I talked about being offended that they wanted to talk to me and and they accused me of of preaching that message just for them i said please don't think that highly of yourself i'm, I'm not going to waste hours of preparation in a week to preach a sermon and what little bit of time i get to preach the word just to preach it to one person uh, you see it wasn't me they were offended by it really was the word of god that they were offended by and so sometimes our offenses can be, um, can be a God, and, and the person that's delivering the message just happens to be the vehicle. But that word offense, 
uh, in the Greek, as we see it used in the New Testament and in the uh, Septuagint, which was the Greek translation of the Old Testament, that word, that Greek word is scandalizio, scandalizio, and it's translated in Latin as, as scandal, to be scandalized, and it's to be a fence. Well, what what a scandalizio was a bait stick. Let me let me use the illustration if I can here. Um, I'm not sure if you can get this in full view of the camera. How many of you know what this is? This is a rabbit box. When I was a kid, we used to set them out in the winter and we'd catch rabbits and and yeah, we'd eat rabbits. Um, tastes just like chicken, though. But this is a this is a rabbit box, and when the rabbit goes in, either to get warm or sometimes we'd put apples in the back of the rabbit box. It hits this stick right here, and when it hits the stick, the door comes down and the animal gets trapped. Well, what that word scandalizio is is a bait stick, and it's used so that the way they used to do it was that. They would take a piece of, of meat or, or bait and they would put it on the end of the bait stick. And when the animal came underneath the box that was over it, it would take that bait stick in its mouth. And when it did, it would get trapped under the trap. And the meaning in all of that is, is that when we take up an offense, when we are offended, what we've done is we've taken that bait stick and we put it in our mouth, and we get trapped in that offense. Well, the Bible encourages us not to be offended, because when we get offended, we, we can act out in all manners of ungodly ways. And I see it happen in the church, in the body of Christ, all the time. We see it in our culture today, where it seems as though everything offends everybody. Now, it's one thing to take the bait stick in my mouth, but it's another thing to take up an offense on behalf of another person. Uh, I'm pretty hard to offend, and maybe it just comes with the territory of being a pastor because, I, believe it or not, I get all kinds of things said to me. Um, and I've learned to have a thick skin and a tender heart, I hope, anyway. Um, but we all struggle with this. Um, but if I take up an offense for someone else, then I... I am really trapped. I don't have the graces in that sense that the individual that's offended. Let me give you an illustration. I don't share 99% of the things that come my way with my wife. I just don't tell her. Why? Because I know that if I, if I share those offenses that come to me, she is more likely to take them an offense on my behalf, and she gets trapped in that. Um, parents, you, you've raised kids. They can mess with you, but don't mess with your kids, right? Um, and so we have to be careful not to take up an offense on another's behalf. The wise thing to do when someone comes to us and they've been offended is to help them get a realistic perspective. Because sometimes we need to say, you know, that's something you just don't need to pick up and carry. You probably misunderstood that. Or you're highly held opinion has been has been violated and it's not worth you holding on to and being trapped in that when we're trapped in an offense by somebody else it affects our fellowship with them it affects our fellowship with others and most importantly when we take up an offense of another at another person it affects our fellowship with God and so we have to be careful not to be offended um, the Bible speaks of this a lot. One last thing I'll leave you with. I don't remember if you, if you recall the story when John the Baptist had been um, thrown into prison by Herod. And uh, he was going to be beheaded. Um, and he sent his disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, to Jesus to ask Jesus, Jesus, um, are you really the Messiah? Are you the one we put all of our stock in? Now, John the Baptist knew that Jesus was the Messiah. He was Jesus' cousin. In his mother's womb, he bore witness to Jesus in Mary's womb that this was the Messiah. And Jesus um, recounts all the things that, that he had done, the miracles that he had performed, etc. 
And he sent word back to John the Baptist. I'm going to paraphrase. Blessed is the one who does not fall away on account of me. You see, John the Baptist was kind of disillusioned at that point. He knew he was about to lose his life. And he's saying, listen, I put all my stop, put my very life in following after you. Are you really the one? And Jesus said, blessed is the one who does not fall away or is offended. The same word is used there, scandalized, scandalizio on account of me. You see, I, when, our, when our strongly held opinions and views, which don't really matter to anybody but us, I, I recognize that my opinions matter to me, not everybody else. When they're threatened, it's easy for me to take up an offense or to be tempted to take up an offense. And the enemy can use it to get me off kilter. He can use it to get you off kilter, to get you off focus of what really matters. The only thing that matters, highly held views, are what the scriptures say. And so let's, let's, um, let's hold to those and, and not our opinions. It makes life a lot simpler when we determine not to be offended.